Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay, we are uh, beginning a new week and we are going to develop a lot of new topics in this week. So we are going to start with the, the day number seven of this course because we are in the middle of the second week. Then we are going to start week number three and it is a countdown of this course. The times fly really, really fast. So we are going to start with uh, today's topic and we are going to talk about a very interesting and useful um, topic that we are need to improve in our learning process. And in this case, it is this topic that we have in the screen. And it is um, how to improve your listening skills. So we are going to talk about one of the four macro skills in a language acquisition. In this case, we are going to talk about the acquisition of English language. So for the beginning of the topic, we are going to uh, talk about something very important that is the, um, the work in the platform. I know that there is no, not all the, the whole group in the session uh, yet, but we are going to give some advices right now because it is very important that you have to um, know about this, um, this course. So um, first, it is very important that you remember that you have to work in the platform because that is the way in, in which um, you are creating your uh, profile. And in this case, it is about the things that you are performing in this course. So you have to work in the platform. You have to uh, review the knowledge. You have to do the exercises. And if you are not uh, working on the platform, I invite you to do it because you need to end the sessions. Uh, we can say um, for the Fridays, it's very important that you have the sessions uh, or the, the lessons done on Friday. So you have to work in the platform, you have to do the exercises because uh, not all of the participants of the course are working on the platform. And if you have uh, some troubles with the exercises, you can ask, on the group of WhatsApp uh, and someone will help you with the exercises and all of that. So remember that you have to work in the platform and you can work as much as you want. Así que eh, si tienen problemas con la plataforma pueden avisar en el grupo de WhatsApp. Um, tienen que eh, trabajar en la plataforma, ya tienen que ir eh, terminando las, las secciones previas. Um, porque es importante, ¿verdad? Ahí es donde se va eh, midiendo, ¿verdad? El grado de, eh, de trabajo que ustedes van haciendo y es donde se lleva el registro y el control de lo que están haciendo ustedes en el curso. Um, pueden trabajar todo lo que ustedes quieran en, el, en la plataforma. Ahí no hay un límite de decir voy una lección al día. No, ustedes pueden trabajar todo lo que quieran si tienen un par de minutos libres, ustedes pueden adelantarse todo lo que ustedes quieran y así es mucho mejor, ya que al final no se quedan sin tiempo para trabajar en la plataforma. So, now we are going to talk about the listening skills. Let me see. Okay, that's good, Sandra. Amazing. Very good. And it's easier to Thank do you. it. You're welcome. It's easier because maybe you don't have time in the future. So 
if you have already finished the platform, you are free to do your, your activities and then you have your work done. That's okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, how to improve your listening skills. Um, one of the hardest things of language acquisition is to understand what people is saying because we are um or we uh, were talking about the the way the people talk in this case we have different ways to pronounce uh, depending on the countries depending on how people learn the language and in this case the listening skills help us to understand what people are saying. We can um, understand the message that people wants to give. So in this case, um, we have four uh, macro skills, listening, writing, reading, and speaking. And in this case, we are going to develop the listening skill. And when we hear a conversation, we need to understand the words in a foreign language. And also we need to uh, take some mental notes to understand the topics that the people is talking. And then if the people that are talking ask us questions, we need to think in, a, in, a, in an answer. So it's very hard to do all the things that we need to understand the language. So in this case, we are going to uh, see a list of 10 things that we need to do to improve our listening skills when we are talking with people. So first it says, listening skills along with speaking skills are essential parts of effective communication. Good communication is valued throughout most jobs in various industries. You may need to consider improving your listening skills to fully apply your communication skills in your workplace and beyond. Um, we have this article uh, that we have the, the information. And in this article, we are going to discuss why listening skills are important and how you can improve them with these 10 steps. We have 10 steps guide to effective listening. So in this case, the first thing that we are going to say, um, we have here, we have here that listening and speaking are essential uh, parts of effective communication. So if we want to have an effective communication, and we want to talk with people and we want to create a relationship with all those people, we need to be very, um, uh, we need to improve the listening part and the speaking part because we can be very, very good at listening, but what is the point to understand what people are saying if we don't produce? Maybe we are afraid, maybe we don't feel confident or the way we are talking. Maybe uh, we think that people may laugh at us because of the way we talk, but that is not the point. The point is to try to speak, try to communicate. So in this case, listening and speaking are hand by hand if we want to have an effective communication. Then, it says that good communication is valued through most jobs in various industries and beyond. Imagine that you um, apply for a job in the, um, in the United States, or maybe you apply for a job in Canada or another country. And it is very important that you speak English, but if you can see the, um, the offers for some jobs, it is not necessary to talk uh, fluent English, maybe basic, maybe intermediate, or maybe, we don't know, but if you can understand English and you can say some basic phrases, that it's okay, because you are going to learn more in that place. So in the case that you apply for a job and you understand what people are saying, and you can say some things to communicate with them, 
it is very valued because um, you have the opportunity to uh, have a better future or a better job in that company. So it says that we have 10 things, but why are listening skills important? Why it is very important to uh, develop uh, this skill? It says, listening skills are an essential part of your communication. When you are an attentive listener, you can begin to improve relationships, make decisions more effectively, and reach agreements with others quickly. So you are attentive listener, you are a very good listener, you are paying attention to what people are saying, then, you can improve relationships because you are good at listening to that person. Then you can make decisions more effectively and more quick. In that case that you are um, listening to someone and you can uh, make fast decisions. You are listening, you are thinking, and then you make decisions. So we have Additional reasons why listening skills are important. We have number one, that demonstrate your ability to pay attention to thoughts, behavior, and feelings of an individual. In this case, it is not just in the English uh, language acquisition. This is something very useful in all the languages because we can demonstrate when someone is talking that we have the ability to pay attention. It is not just like to the words. It is also about the thoughts, about the behavior, how people it's um, doing something, uh, the hands, the face, something like that. The feelings, how is the people feeling in that moment when it's talking? Then number two, increase your power to influence, serve, motivate, or develop people effectively. Also, the listening skill is very important because we can influence the people because we are listening what they are saying. Serve because we know what the people want. Motivate because we hear that someone is feeling bad, is feeling sad, is feeling down. In that case, we can motivate with other words and develop uh, some relationship with people. Number three, enables an organization to operate efficiently with the information that are given that may cause them to adapt to market trends or consumer needs. In this case, we're talking about job. And in this case, when we listen what people is saying, we can and know what people want for the market. In this case, we are talking about market. So in this case, what the consumer or the people that uh, buy things want, maybe they want something sweet, maybe they want something uh, spicy, or maybe they want a new kind of car, a new color of shirts, something like that. And if we can hear what people want or what people need, we can improve our, um, our market and we can grow. Then enhance basic human interaction. We can talk with people and that's very important because we need to talk with people. We need to create relationships with others. And the last one, build personal and professional relationships. It is not just uh, making friends, for example. It is just, it is about also creating connections with other people that can help us in the market because we are going to create professional relationships, not just personal uh, relationships. It is about the life and it is about the job and it is about the work, all of that in one thing. So listening skills are also important to many business roles such as. So we are going to see uh, the roles that um, involves listening skills. First, 
sales because we need to sell something. We need to create a, that, um, we can say um, that relationship with the buyer or the people that is going to buy something. Negotiation, because we are listening what people are saying and we can negotiate and go to a better um, a response. Coaching, because we are going to help people to do something. Mentoring, interviewing, marketing research, facilitation, and managing. And in those, um, in those business roles, it's very important the listening skills. Then the, the main part of this topic is how to improve your listening skills. And it says it is essential to evaluate. We need to evaluate your current listening skills to select the areas you can improve in. Here are some steps you might take to help improve your listening skills. But the first thing, you need to make an evaluation. How is my listening skill? I'm good, I'm medium, I'm elevate height or whatever we are. And we can improve that um, areas that we are not, go not good. Because maybe when we are talking with someone that it is not, like a um, native speaker, we are okay because we are uh, talking at the same um, level because we are talking like slow, not very fast, with no some uh, very difficult words. But in the case that we are listening to someone that is native, it is very dif difficult because they speak really fast they use different words, different pronunciation, or they are not uh, using the grammar as we know, because here we uh, learn to use grammar, the structure of the sentence, but in other countries that is not important because they speak for communication only and not uh, thinking about the structure, but us uh, learn how to use the structures. So we need to create that evaluation of what we know and what is my level and what is the, the, the things that I need to improve. So we are going to see. Let me see if I can show you the list of 10 things that we need to do to improve our listening skills. So, we have number one. This is um, when we are talking with someone face to face. Number one, maintain eye contact with the speaker. So I'm going to write the list, then I'm going to uh, talk about one by one, so don't worry. Number two, visualize what the speaker is saying. Number three, limit judgment. Number four, don't interrupt. Number five, wait for a pause to ask question. Number six, ask clarifying question. Number seven, empathize with the speaker. Number eight, pay attention to nonverbal cues.
Number nine, provide the speaker. with feedback. And number 10, practice listening. So in this case, we are going to make a pause. Estamos hablando de eh, la parte importante de listening skills. Estamos diciendo que es importante porque nos ayuda con nuestra vida cotidiana, con nuestro trabajo. Y en este caso estamos hablando de, eh, de cómo podemos mejorar esta, este skill o esta habilidad cuando estamos aprendiendo un nuevo idioma. En este caso es en inglés. Y nos dice que eh, nos va a servir para crear relaciones personales y eh, relaciones eh, sociales o profesionales porque vamos a demostrar que somos buenos con el eh, listening. Aquí tenemos una lista de 10 cosas que tenemos que hacer para mejorar nuestro listening skill when we are talking with people face to face in some cases. And nowadays we know that we have this kind of communication throughout the screen of a computer or a cell phone or some electronic devices. But we know that in some point of this time, we are going to have this kind of communication face to face again. So it is important that we can uh, make a difference between the communication that we create with someone throughout the, the screen of the computer and the communication that we have face to face with someone because it, be, it is very different when we are using the screen of the computer because we are just saying some part of the body. In this case, we are just uh, seeing the face, the hands, and that's all. And maybe just we can see the hands because we are hiding the hands uh, in the screen. So in that case, it's very difficult to, to know uh, the nonverbal uh, language that people is using because we are just saying a serious face or a smiley face or something like that. And we can um, understand everything about what people is thinking in that moment. Maybe people is not listening. Maybe people is seeing something else and we don't know because there are a lot of things happening. And when we are talking with someone face to face, it's, um, it provides a lot of information because of the way people are sitting, because of uh, the face of the people, the hands, uh, the tone of voice, and a lot of things. So the number one, we are going to develop uh, this list, we are going to divide, and we are going to split one by one. So in this case, number one, Maintain eye contact with the speaker. We need to see the face of the other uh, person or people that is or are talking. So when you are listening to someone talk, you should avoid looking at the window like this. Oh, look at the bird. It is a butterfly because it's a show that we are not paying attention. Texting using the, 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 the cell phone when someone is talking, it's not like uh, the best thing to do when we are talking with someone or scrolling throughout your phone or scanning a computer screen. Limit any unnecessary uh, distraction, provide the speaker with your undivided uh, attention and make an effort to look at them. This provides them with a non-verbal cue that you are interested in what they are saying, which encourage them to continue expressing themselves. Consider that the speaker may not look at you because they might be shy, feel uncertain, or the culture may not use direct eye contact for communication. You should continue to face the speaker even if they don't look at you. So. In the number one, maintain eye contact with the speaker. It is very important that we can pay attention to that person. Maybe it's very hard because we are interested in something else, but 
we need to try to give the more attention that we are um, trying to uh, give to that person. So, en el número uno, tenemos que mantener el contacto visual con esa persona. A veces es difícil porque eh, estamos cansados, estamos aburridos, estamos molestos por algo y nuestra atención se va para los lados, para la ventana, para el teléfono. That is very common that we use the, the, the cell phone when we are talking. But it is maybe for our jobs, maybe for the, the way of communication that we create in these um, uh, past years because of the, of the pandemic. But in this moment, it's very important that we can um, pay attention to the speaker because we need to create again that, uh, that communication with people. So, eh, tenemos que poner la más atención que lo, la mayoría de la atención que podamos. No siempre vamos a estar solo mirando a la persona porque a veces podemos asustar a, la, a algunas personas. Like it says, maybe some speakers can look at you because they are shy. So in, in, in that case, we can pay attention to the, the, the person, but in, at the same time, we can make them feel uh, like they are not just something judgmental. So in that case, the people is shy can feel very, very freak, um, very, I mean, they can feel that someone is saying a lot of things about them. Maybe that person that is shy can think, why is he or she looking at me like that? Maybe I have something on the face. Maybe I say something that is wrong and it can create conflict in their mind. So we need to be very careful with those people. But it's very important that we maintain an eye contact with the speaker because we demonstrate that we are interested in the topic that he or she is talking. Number two, visualize what the speaker is saying. This is very important because we are going to use the imagination. So in this case, we need to try to conjure up mental images um, of what the speaker is talking about while you are listening to help retain information. This may be a literal picture or other concept that relate to the topic. This will help you to remember keywords and phrases when you listen for long periods. Visualizing what the speaker is saying will also help you to not have to prepare for what to say next. If you happen to lose focus, make sure to immediately refocus. This is very important. When someone is talking, we need to create a mental map of what people is saying. Or maybe we can create an image if we have that kind of imagination, that's better. But in the case that we are going to use the, uh, the information that someone is giving to us, we can make a, a mental map um, about the most important points of the conversation, because maybe we need that information to create um, some documents. Uh, maybe we need that information to give an advice, or we are going to use that information to create some um, presentation or something like that. So if we create mental maps about the information, it's easier and it is um, better for us to understand what is um, the, uh, the topic, the main topic and the main points of the conversation. En el número dos, dice que tenemos que visualizar lo que el speaker o lo que el, la persona que habla está diciendo. In this case, we can create maps, mental maps. Podemos crear mapas mentales. That's very, very um, useful in that case. Es, es bastante, eh, lo podemos utilizar mucho y nos va a ayudar mucho porque creamos nuestra, eh, we have the, the whole information and we create something shorter. Vamos a cortar, vamos a crear algo más pequeño eh, ya con las ideas centralizadas de qué es lo que la otra persona está diciendo. It's like in this moment, I am talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, giving you some information. And you have to create your own information shorter and with the main points. 
en este caso, ¿verdad? Yo estoy hablando y diciéndoles toda la información acerca de how to improve your listening skills. Ustedes van a tomar las partes importantes, pequeñas frases, un mapa mental de lo que yo estoy diciendo, que le va a servir y que es más corto y mejor y lo van a almacenar mucho mejor. So, in that case, we need to create that. Some um, database, in that case. Una, una, una base de datos de la información. Number three, limit judgments. Listen without criticizing the speaker in your mind while they talk, even if the message causes your agitation or alarm. Try to avoid thinking about negative or judgmental comments because This compromises your ability to listen. You also want to listen with an open mind and understand that the person is giving you their perspective. You might realize, realize that they make more sense as they continue to talk to you and you won't know the full story without listening. This is very uh, important that we need to uh, stop criticizing or Um, or thinking about bad things about the people that is talking because maybe uh, that person is uh, telling us uh, something that is very hard for us to understand because it is um, maybe an alarm topic or something bad or something that can create agitation or some something like that. It is a topic that is a very sensible for us to listen. And in that case, someone is giving the perspective. But attention to this. All of us can give uh, our opinions, but we need to respect the other person. And maybe we can say, well, I can say whatever I want, and that's my opinion. But when we are, Uh, on respecting the people, it is not just an opinion. That is something uh, that is like an attack. So we need to be careful with that. Maybe the topic is uh, difficult to understand or is difficult to us, but we need to listen and we can create a new perspective of that topic. So. En, este, en el número tres, vamos a limitarnos o, o no vamos a crear juicio, no vamos a criticar a la persona mientras habla de algún eh, tema que a nosotros nos parece controversial, pero que esa persona está dando su perspectiva. All of us can give eh, the opinion of some topics. Todos podemos dar nuestra opinión siempre y cuando respetemos a los demás. It is not like my opinion is better than yours and you are not allowed to talk about that topic because I know everything about that. That is not the point. The point is to listen to that uh, people talking about the topic and creating uh, new things about the topic, new uh, information or uh, something that they believe. So we are going to uh, stop criticizing and uh, waiting for that uh, people to end the things that they are saying and maybe we can find something useful in the um, the conversation with that person. Number four, don't interrupt. Everyone speaks and process information at different rates. This is very important because maybe people um, have problems listening carefully because We can get distracted very easily, or maybe we are trying to process all the information. So we need to stop for a moment, give time to the person to understand what the speaker is saying, and then we can continue talking about the topic. But in this case, if someone is delivering their message slowly, try to cultivate patience and wait for them to finish before trying to rush them along by guessing the next thing they are going to say or replying before they have finished talking. Interrupting sends the wrong message to the speaker. It might suggest that what you have to say is more important, that you don't care about what they are saying or that the conversation is a competition. 
It is also important to refrain from offering solutions. Most often, people just want to listen. However, if you have a brilliant idea, you may consider asking if you can share your ideas before you offer your solution. Maybe uh, you can find some people like this. There are a lot of people that talk very slowly because that's the way they talk. And maybe we are not like patient enough to, to wait to the people end the conversation and we are, I don't have time. I need them to, de to end the conversation. What are they going to say? And I am not feeling very comfortable in this conversation and I need to go to my job and I need to, a lot of things. But there are people that talk very slow and we need to be very patient because that people maybe have problems to uh, focus or to talk or they are maybe shy. And we need to be patient to let them express the things that they want to say. And then we can wait. If the people want an advice, we can give an advice. The people want a solution for the problem. We can offer a solution for the problem, but waiting, we need to stop and say, hmm, I need to listen first, then I can give my opinion if that person wants my opinion, or maybe that, that person just want me to hear them. So, en el número cuatro, no vamos a interrumpir a las personas, vamos a dejarlas que termine, que expresen todo lo que quieren decir, y si esa persona quiere una solución, se la podemos ofrecer, si esa persona quiere un consejo, se lo podemos dar, pero siempre y cuando esa persona nos dé la pauta para hacer. And it's that very important in the, in the improving all our listening skills. Number five, wait for a pause to ask a question. You may not understand everything someone says to you. It is best to wait until they're paused to ask them to back up and provide a clarification for the topic or phrase. You misunderstood. This is something that you need to do. If you are not understanding, you need to wait and then say, oh, listen, I have problems to understand what you are saying because I begin listening, but now I don't know what you are saying. And I need you to help me to understand what is the main point of the conversation. And that's very important because you need to understand what people are saying. It is not like I am talking, 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 and that's it. Because you need to understand because what is the point of the conversation if you don't understand anything? So, necesitamos preguntar. That's something that we need to do. Necesitamos preguntar. Si tenemos dudas, nosotros, ¿qué hacemos? Preguntamos. Necesitamos clarificar the, info, the information because we need to understand. Necesitamos entender. Necesitamos comprender. So if we have a question, we can ask. We can wait for a pause and then ask, what is the topic about? What is this? What is the meaning of this word? How can I use this? Uh, give me instructions. Can you help me to understand? All of the things that we can do when someone is talking and that's valid because we need to understand what people is saying. Then, and the number uh, six is uh, also about the ask question. In this case, ask clarifying question, question that can give you an answer that you need to understand the topic. You need to ask clarifying uh, questions. Then, empathize with the speaker, crear o ser empático. That's the point of this uh, thing. Empathy is essential to effective listening. You should mirror the emotion the speaker has. For instance, is their face convey sadness or joy? Then your facial expression and words should also convey similar emotions. Empathizing with the speaker takes concentration and expends energy, but uh, it allows for open communication and establish a relationship. We need to understand what people is feeling. 
it is not like we are like magicians that we know everything about the other person. But in this case, we can see the facial expression and we can understand if that people is angry, is sad, is happy, or something is happening. And we can change our, um, how can we say, uh, we can uh, change our expressions to um, give them the information that we are in the same moment, in the same uh, place. So, número siete, vamos a empatizar con el, 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 la persona que habla. Vamos a tratar de ponernos en el ritmo, ¿verdad? De cómo está esa persona sintiéndose en ese momento para no incomodarla. Obviamente, puede que nosotros nos sintamos eh, exactamente lo mismo que la otra persona, pero podemos demostrarle respeto haciendo esto. Number eight, pay attention to nonverbal clues. Most of the communication that takes place between individuals is nonverbal. Um, you can learn a great um, deal about someone through their body language and tone of voice when they are communicating um, with you. It is easy to detect boredom, enthusiasm, or irritation on someone's face when they talk depending on their eyes. Uh, also uh, about the, the way they put them out and position of their shoulders, the shoulders. Therefore, listening also includes paying attention to nonverbal cues. It depends due to make inference based on what a person actually means when they are talking to you. In this case, we are uh, talking about uh, the, the signals that people uh, do with the body. So in this case, for example, uh, someone is with like this, with a face like this, like this. And we think mm, that that person is stressed, that person is angry, something bad happened, or when the, the, the person is like this. We can say, ah, that person is bored. So, in that case, with the, the language that we use with our body can give some information. So, in the number A, in the number eight, estamos hablando de las señales no verbales que nosotros damos con el cuerpo. Podemos demostrar alegría, we're like this, moving too much, smiling, and we are paying attention, and we are like this, like this, like this. When we are sad, we're, we don't want to talk, we are like this and in the face, the shoulders, we are not moving. And we are, when we are bored, like we are in, on the cell phone, maybe we are, yeah, uh, 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 and we are not paying attention when we are angry. Yes, what is the point? And the tone of voice, that is very important. Cambiamos, tenemos muchos cambios. El tono de la voz, en la cara, la, la forma en la que nosotros ponemos nuestra cara, las manos, los gestos que hacemos con las manos, los hombros, cómo ponemos los hombros cuando estamos cansados, cuando estamos alegres, cuando estamos enojados. There is a, a lot of uh, signals that we do with the body when we are talking with people. And we can see, it's very, very easy to uh, find those signals because it is... Uh, very common to see when people is, is happy, is angry, and that's not very uh, difficult to understand. And we can, oh, stop, that person is angry, and I can talk with them because maybe I say something that makes them more angry and they want to uh, begin a fight, maybe. That's the, the point. We need to see if we are going to talk with someone. We are going to see if they are in a good way or in a good manner to talk with them. Then number nine, almost the end, provide the speaker with feedback. Feedback can be verbal and non-verbal. You can use verbal feedback by saying things like, I understand that must be difficult or okay. You can use non-verbal cues such as nodding your head using appropriate facial expression. 
The goal is to send signal to the speaker so they know that you are actively listening. In a situation where someone is giving you tasks, make sure you repeat the task link back to the speaker so they know you understand what you are supposed to do. Write it down, what they say also shows attentiveness. En el número nueve, vamos a proveer feedback. Vamos a darle a esa persona eh, una señal de que estamos entendiendo. For example, when someone is talking, we say, mm, uh -huh, okay, oh, sounds like that. It is not like words. It is not necessary to use uh, words. We can make sounds to let them know that we are understanding. So in that case, we can use the verbal uh, expressions. Oh, that's okay. Oh, really? Ah, nice. Oh, like that? Wow. That makes the people uh, understand that we are paying attention then. Make some uh, movements. Just nodding the heads mm, with some sounds. Or maybe someone is telling us, well, you are going to first go to the store and then we say, ah, go to the store. Uh -huh. Then then you are going to buy uh, tomatoes. We are going to buy uh, milk. You have to uh, buy um, maybe sugar. And then we are repeating, ah, okay. I'm going to the supermarket. I need to buy tomatoes. Then I need to buy sugar. Then I need to buy milk. Ah, that's okay. Everything is okay? Yeah, okay. So we are providing feedback. And people think, oh, she is paying attention or he is paying attention. And that's very useful. And the last one, practice listening. That's very, very important. Because in this case, uh, we are not talking about uh, the, the classes. We are not talking about the sessions. We are talking about something that we did or we do, or we are going to do in our daily life. Maybe we are very, 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 um, uh, that we have a lot of things to do and we are very tired and uh, we have a lot of work and we have a short time to do some things. But in this case, if we want to improve, this skill we need to practice and in this case we need for example if you have time to see uh, some series or watch a movie you can do it like this first you can um, use to see uh, movies in the native language in this case uh, movies that are from UK, the United States, Canada, or something like that, that is speaking English. You can use it with the subtitles because in some cases the people talk very fast and it is not, um, at this point, we can uh, see the, the movie because we are trying to understand what people are saying. So we can use the subtitles in our language. Then we can, uh, upgrade that things. We can see a movie with the uh, language, the native language, then we can change that subtitle from Spanish to English. We can see the, uh, the movie, we can listen the, um, the voices, the pronunciation, and we can read the words because we are using the subtitles in the native language. Then we can upgrade again and we can just listen the conversation, listen the things that are happening in the movie. And we are uh, creating that, um, that things and we are improving the listening skills. Para la última, importantísimo, estamos hablando de la práctica. Um, En, en este caso, nosotros podemos ver el, nuestro programa favorito. Una película, una serie, una caricatura, un anime, whatever we want. Or even music. That's very important. Si nosotros disfrutamos mucho de la música, lo podemos utilizar para mejorar nuestro listening skill. 
primero podemos ir eh, viendo o cambiando la serie en las películas everything a uh, English todo a inglés that's very very important because we are going to uh, create that the things with the with the language ya lo cambiamos a inglés pero le ponemos subtítulos al español that's good that's the first step le ponemos los subtítulos vamos viendo el significado the phrases but in this case when we are learning It is not that like we are going to enjoy the movie. So we can uh, use movies that we have watched before. So, para la práctica, no es que vamos a ver una película nueva. Because we're not going to enjoy it. No la vamos a disfrutar, no la vamos a entender, porque vamos a tratar de focus on the language, focus on the listening. Vamos a tratar de enfocarnos solo en la parte de el listening y no vamos a ver las acciones porque nos vamos a perder, nos vamos a eh, eh, confundir. En, eh, it's very hard. So, podemos ver una película que ya hayamos visto antes y que nos haya gustado, que nos sepamos más o menos de la trama. So, we are going to change the language and add the subtitles. Luego, con otra película que ya hayamos visto, podemos poner Uh, the speaking part in English, o sea, the language, then we are going to uh, use the uh, subtitles in English. Después de que hayam, hayamos intentado ¿verdad? ver algunas películas con el idioma nativo y con el subtítulo al español, la vamos, a ver, vamos a ver otra que lleve el idioma original en inglés y los subtítulos en inglés because we are reading and listening at the same time. So we are practicing. And then the last part is to watch the movie without subtitles. Al final vamos a verlas sin subtítulos. To adjust the, um, the mind and the listening part. So vamos a ver la película sin subtítulos, solo con el idioma, tratando de entender. That's very, very important. And that is a very useful exercise. Es un ejercicio bastante útil cuando queremos mejorar el listening. So, then things that we can uh, do to improve our listening skills. And that's um, all for the listening part. So, we have another topic. Uh, this is the... the The, the listening part. Uh, but we are going to see the other topic because we have two topics for today. So we are going to see. I have an image uh, in this document, I guess, I think. So let me search for the image because we are going to talk about another thing. Yes, here it is. Okay. In this case, We are going to talk about this topic number two. Topic two, and it is about, let me see, adverbial clause of time. Okay, we have a conversation here and we are going to read. In this case, maybe it is very hard to read the conversation because It is very, very small, but we are going to try to do it. This conversation is on the platform and you can find the video there of the conversation that is very um, useful because we are listening to other voices. So it is a listening about a wedding. Estamos hablando de una boda. And we have Jill and Emika. And Jill is saying, your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emika, or Emiko, I guess. Then the other girl says, thank you. These pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? And it says, Ada Shrine, that is a, like a temple. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at that shrine. That's interesting. Where uh, there are a lot of people there, where usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremonies. 
But afterward, we had a reception uh, with family and friends. So what are receptions like in Japan? There is a big dinner and after the food is served, the guests give a speech say, or, um, or kind or sing songs. It's uh, like, it sounds like fun. It really is. And then before they get sleep, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests give presents, yes. And the guests give money to the bride and groom. So they are talking about the, uh, the, the wedding, the ceremony in Japan. And they say that in that cases, uh, they use the shrines that are like temples to uh, do the ceremonies. But the important thing in this, in this conversation, it is not uh, the topic of the wedding. In this case, it is uh, talking about a adverbial clause of time. And we are going to talk about adverbs. So that's the important point in this, in this conversation because they are using, for example, in, in, the, in the sentence number two or the, the speaker number two, this picture were taken right after the ceremony, after that word is, a, and we have some words like that in the conversation. So, in esta conversación estamos eh, hablando de eh, adverbial clause of time. Vamos a hablar de los adverbial clause of time. En la conversación estamos utilizando esas, esas palabras, los adverbios, que nos están demostrando tiempo. So, that's the point of the conversation, not the wedding, the adverbial clause of time. So we have some information about the adverbial clause of time, and in this case, the adverb. So let's see. I'm going to do it like this, because I need this image at the beginning. Then I need the information like this. So it says, an adverb clause of time shows when something happens. An advert clause of time shows when something happens. Okay, in this case, it's telling us when something happened. Uh, in the conversation, she is telling the time when the action happened. Las cláusulas eh, adverbiales de tiempo nos muestran cuando algo pasó o cuando algo pasa. It is usually, it is usually introduced by time adverbs. And we have some examples. We have before, after, us, when, while, until, as soon as, since, again, I guess, no. Since no sooner than as long as and so many others. So those words uh, are adverbs and they are talking about time. And we use these words or it's the, um, the, these words introduce the time adverbs. In this case, it is talking uh, that something happens and we use the adverbs to use in the clause. So, eh, de, decíamos que los adverbios de tiempo eh, nos muestran cuando algo pasó y usualmente introdu se introducen por las palabras estas, lo, 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 los, um, los adverbs of time. Que tenemos ahí los ejemplos before, after, as, when, while, until, as soon as, 
since no sooner than as, as long as, and so many others. But um, tomorrow we are going to uh, develop this topic and then we are going to have some exercises about the um, advert class of time because now it's time to end this session. So have a good night. See you tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to uh, develop this topic. And that's everything for this day. So have a good night and see you tomorrow in the next session. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good night, night. Good night everybody. Good night. See you tomorrow.